Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Before I begin today's lesson, I have a question. If I want to know about God, where do I look? In the Bible. The Bible tells me I can look at what God made and I can figure out there is a God. I can figure out he's big and strong, but that is all I can know. If I want to know if he loves me or what sin is or how to get to heaven, I have to look in the Bible. Well, we are having an adventure. There is a holiday coming up this week. What holiday is it? Christmas. And so we are taking a break from the book of Acts and going through the Christmas story. Now, I know for a lot of you kids, this is so familiar, especially Luke 2, but we are going to go through the whole Christmas story, not just Luke 2 in this class. So last week, we had started out in Luke chapter 1, where an angel had arrived and announced to Zechariah and to Elizabeth that they were going to have a special baby, not the Messiah, but the one who would get the people ready for the Messiah. Do you remember what his name was? John. You got it. And then that same angel, Gabriel, had shown up to a young woman named Mary and told her she was going to have a special baby, the Messiah. And she had believed. And the angel had told her, hey, go visit Elizabeth and Zechariah and see if I'm if this is true. And so she had traveled all the way to Judea from Nazareth and met with Elizabeth and Zechariah and found out, yes, her angelic vision had been true. She had not been dreaming. The Messiah was really, really on the way. And so she had stayed with Zechariah and Elizabeth for three months and then gone back to Nazareth. Meanwhile, John the baptizer had been born Everyone had gathered at their house for the circumcision, the traditional ceremony where he was named and circumcised and welcomed into the family of Israel. And so that's where we had left off last week. So at this point, how many people know that the Messiah is on the way immediately? Only three, Zechariah, Elizabeth, and Mary. No one else knows that it's time for the Messiah to come. And so we're going to go now to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, and we're going to find out what happens when an angel is sent to tell yet a fourth person that the Messiah is on the way. So Matthew, chapter 1, starting in verse 18. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to marry Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Now, Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, and he didn't want to expose her to public disgrace. So he had it in mind to divorce her quietly. But as he considered this, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins and all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel commanded him. He took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Now let's go forward to Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Now there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with them. Praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing's happened that the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. And on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was given the name Jesus, which the angel had given him before he had been conceived. So let's go back through today's lesson and make sure we understand it. So when we started the lesson, the angel arrived to let Joseph know that the Messiah was on the way and that Mary, who had apparently come back from seeing Zachariah and Elizabeth and told him that she was expecting the Messiah, was telling the truth because Joseph had not believed it at first. He wanted to divorce her quietly because in those days when you were engaged, the engagement ceremony was almost like a wedding in itself. Um, the parents were involved. There was a whole ceremony to arrange this wedding. And so to break an engagement took a divorce, even though they weren't officially married yet. And so he was ready to divorce her because she was pregnant and the child was not his. 
But the angel comes and tells Joseph finally, she's told the truth and this child is the Messiah conceived by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph obeys. He takes Mary home as his wife, but has no union with her. And things are moving along until all of a sudden they find out that Caesar Augustus over in Rome has decided this is a great time to have a census of the entire Roman world. And you don't get to be registered where you live. You get to go back to your ancestral hometown. So for Joseph and Mary, this is a big deal. Joseph and Mary are both descendants of King David and their ancestral hometown is Bethlehem. But where are they living? Nazareth. Nazareth is 70 miles away from Bethlehem, and it is not an easy trip. Israel is not nice flat land like Iowa. It is not green like Iowa. It is mountains and desert. It takes at least three days to walk from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And as far as Mary and Joseph are probably concerned, the timing could not be worse. Okay, she is at this point nine months pregnant. They take this trip, they get to Bethlehem, and they have to register with the Roman government. And then because the town is full of people for this registry, all the descendants of David are there. There is not room for them in the end. And so instead of getting to have birth at home with mom around they're by themselves in Bethlehem and so we aren't told <laughs> that there's a stable but they are we are told that this baby has to be placed in a manger because there's no room for them in the end well where what is a manger and where is it so a manger is where you put the food for the animals that were kept in those days. Everyone had to have animals for transportation and for living. And so he's placed in a manger because there's no room for them in the end. Now, I have a question for you kids. So if a manger is the dish that you put food in for animals, would you put a baby there? Think about it. It's like the dog dish. Would you put a baby in a dog dish unless that was all you had? Never. You would never put a baby there. But that's what they had to do. So meanwhile, while they're having Jesus and having to put him in a manger because they don't have any place else to put him, God sends the angels again. So up to this point, like I said, it's just Zachariah, Elizabeth, Mary, and Joseph who knows what's going on until the night of the birth. And then all of a sudden, somebody else gets to know. Who gets to know? Shepherds. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us this, but we know from history, Bethlehem is only seven miles away from Jerusalem. And it is the place where the sacrificial lambs for Passover were raised. And so there are all sorts of shepherds and sheep raised in and around Bethlehem. And so these shepherds are out watching these sheep at night, minding their own business, when suddenly the angel appears to them and says, well, while you guys are just out here watching your sheep minding your own business, there is something amazing happening in Bethlehem, the city of David, the Savior, the Messiah you've been waiting for has been born. And here's the sign. You will find him wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. Now, if a manger is like a dog dish, a food dish, how many babies in Bethlehem were lying in a manger that night? Only one. So did these shepherds have to go search all of the hospitals and all of the houses? No, they had to go look at all the mangers. And so these shepherds rush to Bethlehem and search until they find the one baby who's lying in a manger. And so they come in and find Jesus. And they tell Mary and Joseph what has just happened out in the field. And Mary treasures these things in her heart because this is not a normal birth at all, right? 
This is not at all how Mary and Joseph expected the birth of the Messiah to go, but it was going exactly as God had said it would. There was a prophecy given to Micah more than 400 years before this, where they were told that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. And so isn't it amazing all that God had to do to make it happen? He had to make there be a census from a Roman governor who, or a Roman uh, emperor who didn't know or love God at all. He's just being emperor of the world. And yet he's fulfilling God's prophecy. So the shepherds rush off and they are the only ones who come to see Jesus at first. They go and tell the people in Bethlehem what had happened and what they had seen. But did you notice who didn't come search for the baby? All these people heard what the shepherds said, but there's no record that any of them bothered to go see if it was true. Was the Messiah just born? Is he there in a manger? Isn't that the most amazing thing? So as we are thinking about Christmas, <laughs> this year, especially this year. I want us to think about that. God did an amazing, amazing miracle and the people didn't care. They listened and then just went about their lives. Very few people took the time to go see if what God had said would happen had really happened. Now, I want to make sure that we think about that because I don't want to be like the people of Bethlehem who heard but didn't care and weren't ready to go see the Messiah that they supposedly had been waiting for their whole lives. I want to make sure that I'm being like the shepherds, that when I hear that the Messiah has come, I am rushing to find him and I'm ready to sit at his feet and worship him because God kept his promise. So let's ask God to help give us shepherd's hearts this Christmas so that we don't miss out on the most important thing that God had done since Adam and Eve by sending Messiah, God with us, Emmanuel. And I hope you also caught what Jesus's name means. The angel had told Joseph, his name will be called Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus' name means God saves. So let's think about that this Christmas. And I look forward to seeing you next week as we find out who else gets to know that the Messiah has come.